All right, so for today's deep dive, we're tackling a question we've gotten well, a lot from listeners like Clem in Sioux Falls. And Shambo over in Eastern Mataloco, right? Oh, and Greg tuning in from Whitefish, Montana. You guys know who you are? We see those emails. And the question on everyone's mind seems to be, who are the voices behind this whole thing? The voices behind the curtain, so to speak. Now, some of you and Caitlin in Nantucket were looking at you, find it, and I quote, a little weird. A little fishy, even if memory serves. And hey, we get it, right? Like in this world of got to post my breakfast. Got to have an opinion on everything. Our choice to, you know, not blast our faces everywhere. Might seem like we're hiding something nefarious. <laughs> exactly. And Carla from the Northampton Slopes even asked if we were on the lam. Which, for the record? Mostly not. But joking aside, this desire to know who you're listening to. It speaks to something bigger, don't you think? Totally. About trust, about connection, all in this digital age we're in. What's your take on that? Well, the Internet's always been this tug of war, yeah, between anonymity, being whoever you want. Versus putting your whole real life self out there. Back in the day, it was all screen names, avatars, like a giant masquerade ball online. You could be anyone, try on different personalities, no real world consequences. And even now that freedom's appealing. No judgment, no pressure. It's why people turn to online spaces for, say, support groups. Makes sense, especially if it's a sensitive topic. Or even just sharing opinions that might get you in hot water offline. Oh, totally. Anonymity can be powerful that way, giving a voice to folks who wouldn't speak up otherwise. But then, on the flip side, We've got listeners like Caitlin wondering if we're, and again, I quote, AI or something, because we haven't, you know, shown our cards. Revealed the wizards behind the curtain. Makes you think, does knowing someone's name actually make you trust them more? It's a fascinating question. Traditionally, we've relied on certain cues to gauge credibility. Like seeing the news anchor on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing the journalist who wrote the article. There's a level of accountability built in, but with podcasting, it's a whole different ballgame. It is. It's like you're dropped into a conversation, but you don't necessarily know who's talking. And that lack of traditional markers, it forces us to rethink how we assess trustworthiness. Right, because we can't just default to, oh, they're on TV, so they must be legit. It introduces this element of uncertainty, which for some folks can breed suspicion. Oh, absolutely. Take, for example, if you're listening to a financial advice podcast. You might trust a host who's upfront about their background, their credentials, right? That <laughs> makes sense. But what if the advice is spot on, even insightful, but you don't know the person's name? Does that change how valuable the information is? That's a good point. It's like judging a book by its cover, huh. or in this case, the lack thereof. But before we get too philosophical here... Right, we've got that other elephant in the room to address. Exactly. Our very vocal, very opinionated producer... Keith. Keith. He has thoughts about our anonymity. Let's just say his emails have been colorful. Subject lines we probably can't repeat on air. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> Let's just say they've involved the phrase, you freaks, more than once. <laughs> but amidst all, shall we say, the passion. He's got some valid business concerns he's raised. Oh, absolutely. He worries that by staying incognito, we're missing out on that deeper connection with all of you. That by not sharing our names, we're not building the same level of trust. Exactly. And trust, he argues, is key to growing an audience. Which, from a business standpoint, he's not wrong. Right. And Keith, marketing genius that he is, figures if we were more out there. More relatable, more marketable, I think the word he used was. Exactly. Then sponsors would be knocking down the door. Ah, yes. Sponsors. Can't forget those. Speaking of which, you are not going to believe the latest opportunity Keith's found for us. Keith seems to think we'd be swimming in sponsorship deals. If we just, what, put on name tags? Basically. Though, knowing Keith, he's probably already got us some fancy engraved ones with our faces on them. Oh, I can see it now. Hello, my name is... Ugh, don't even <laughs> joke about that. But speaking of sponsors, you are not going to believe the latest gem Keith's unearthed for us to shill. Oh, no. This is about the Chocatini, isn't it? Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. I swear, sometimes I wonder if Keith exists in this reality... He's been relentless with this new sponsor, this Chocatini, wants us to work it into the show like it's the most natural thing in the world. And for our listeners who may not be familiar, Chocatini is uh, attempting to market a fizzy chocolate alcoholic beverage as being 
for kids. The for kids part being the real kicker. Then, I'm pretty sure that's got to be illegal somewhere. At least morally questionable, let's say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the best part, he actually sent over a sample ad read for us. Brace yourself. Reading in an overly chipper, exaggerated voice. Hey there, deep divers. Are you tired of those same old boring adult beverages? Well, dive into something deliciously different with Chocatini, the fizzy chocolatey treat that's making grown-up time fun time. It's like a party in every bottle. <laughs> Chocatini, for kids at heart. Ask your local beverage provider for Chocatini today. Oh my. I know, right? Where do we even begin to unpack that? It really highlights this weird line content creators walk, doesn't it? Especially when we're talking anonymity. Totally. On one hand, you need sponsors. Keeps the lights on, right? Hmm. But on the other, if we're staying anonymous, are we somehow more responsible for the stuff we promote? Or does it even matter because we're not attaching our names to it? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Like, would knowing who we are make listeners feel differently about us hawking chocolate booze? It's a conundrum. And as if the Chocatini thing wasn't wild enough. We also have a potential sponsorship from something called Burfee Stick. You heard that right, Burkey Stick. Apparently it's this high protein beef jerky targeted towards, and I'm quoting Keith here, people who love to burp. I, okay, you know? Know. <laughs> I'm all for a good protein snack, but the whole burp angle, it's a bold move. It is, though it does make you think about the spectrum here. We've got the potentially irresponsible Chocatini on one end. And then the just plain bizarre burfy stick on the other. Exactly. Does anonymity give us more freedom to be picky about this stuff? That's what I'm wondering. Like, if we were public figures, would we even consider Chagatini? Even if it meant less revenue. Right. Or would it be a PR nightmare waiting to happen? It's a balancing act. You want that creative freedom, but also, you've got to be upfront with your audience, even if they don't know your name. So what's the answer? What do we do? Honestly, I think that's the question we're all left grappling with. Maybe there isn't one clear answer. So we've covered a lot of ground here. Anonymity, the internet, questionable sponsors. And let's not forget Keith's unique brand of email encouragement. Oh, right. Keith, our own personal hype man with a penchant for the dramatic. <laughs> to put it mildly. But all jokes aside, at the end of the day, the decision rests with us, right? It does. And for now, we're sticking with what we know, or rather what you don't know. Keeping the mystery alive. Exactly. But we really appreciate all the feedback, the questions. Clem, Chambo, Greg, Caitlin, Carla, you've all given us a lot to think about. It's been illuminating hearing how listeners interpret this whole anonymity thing. Because it's not just about us. It's about how we connect in this world that seems obsessed with, you know, knowing everything. Right. It's like, what's the value of anonymity when information is so readily available? Is it even possible to be anonymous anymore? And even if it is, should it be? Are we just giving a free pass to bad actors, people spreading misinformation, hiding from consequences? Or is it more nuanced than that? Because anonymity can also protect people, give them a voice when they might not feel safe otherwise. Exactly. So where's the line between privacy, responsibility? Between staying safe and like being accountable for your actions. It's messy, and honestly, we don't have those answers. Not all of them, at least. But we do want to hear what you think. Keep the conversation going. What are your experiences with anonymity? Where do you draw the line? Hit us up, let us know. Because who knows, maybe one day we'll pull back the curtain completely. But until then, the mystery continues right here on The Deep Dive. See you next time.